Michael Hastings was a contributor to our TV show on Current, uh, and he went and came on the Young Turks often, of course. And every time, uh, fiery, right? And every time, ready to take on whichever uh, person or group in the power establishment was uh, not telling the truth, uh, not being honest with the American people. And we have just a small compilation uh, that one of the producers on TV side, James Gannon, put together quickly uh, to give you a sense of how fiery and, and passionate Michael was about journalism. Let's watch. You have David Axelrod, who, who has a reputation uh, for being one of the, the hardest, uh, dirty might not be the word I'm looking for, but uh, you know, an old school uh, form of politics. You have Stephanie Cutter, who was a veteran of the 2004 Kerry campaign, who watched Kerry get decimated by these sort of Karl Rove type tactics. And you have a guy like Jim Messina, who's the campaign manager who knows how to win. When she covered stories that I was also covering, she would uh, quote anonymous Pentagon officials saying things that weren't true. Yeah. That, that, that's, where, that's, where, that's where I draw the line. I think, though, that, that you know, these filmmakers do have a responsibility, especially when they're tackling the subject, to get it right, to get the big, one of the big questions, one of the biggest debates in the last 10 years. You, know, you, you have to get it right. You said Eric Holder was a busy man. I think he needs a vacation, and I think that vacation should last at least uh, three more years and however many days <laughs> left in this administration. I, I, I am so out. Like, we haven't got to uh, the AP, uh, AP scandal yet, but... In terms of, of the IRS, again, let's, let's talk about the administration's damage control here. It's, it's classic Obama in the sense that, yes, he's firing people, but the people you're firing are, are going to be you know, low-level guys, people he doesn't have a personal relationship with, where Eric Holder himself, uh, most recently, he, he's one of the inner circle. He was at Valerie Jarrett's daughter's wedding earlier uh, last year. I mean, he, he's someone who's very tight with Obama, uh, so, so that's why he survived so long, despite... Uh, despite the you know, Fast and Furious scandal uh, and a number of other these things. And, but, but I think this, you know, this is just embarrassing. When, when you have to go up and say, oh, I don't know anything about anything repeatedly, uh, you should be out of a job. So, you know, as I was looking at Twitter briefly before the show, after uh, Michael passed away, I noticed uh, David Sirota had sent a tweet about people who were immediately, you know, saying terribly ugly things about Hastings even after he died, right. right? What was amazing, and I think kind of speaks to Michael's role as a journalist, is that I couldn't tell if they were on the left or the right. I couldn't tell if they were Democrats or Republicans, right? Because he went after the Bush administration right. and the Obama administration with the same kind of fervor, and the people who are the political hacks and the activists, et cetera, that don't care about ideology, that don't care about principles, et cetera, uh, hated him. Yeah, and I think that hatred, frankly, was um, uh, was shared by a lot of people in the establishment media. I, you know, we interviewed uh, Michael a couple of times on the Majority Report, and very often we would come back to that theme of just how much um, he had, um, uh, how much resent uh, he had created in a lot of these uh, establishment reporters, because you know, for them, this is their this is their career above all, you know, and. Uh, and that has been, you know, something that I think has been uh, really problematic over the years that y you get far less accountability of our government from reporters who are concerned um, in the beginning and in the end with their access and uh, where they are within the, the, the social pecking order of the establishment because it's also, it's also a dollar figure for them too. And, and so it, he was a threat to them uh, in this regard because he would tell things and report things that they would not. He wouldn't play ball. And I remember, of course, I'm not gonna say who it is, but somebody, a, a, a major reporter, uh, once told me, hey, listen, we need access. Our editors ask us to get the access. If we don't have the access, we don't have a job, and I got a kid who's got a bar mitzvah coming up. Right. Okay, and that's as real as it gets. And it's interesting, because I actually talked to uh, Michael in an interview we did before, right before he signed on as a contributor for the Young Turks. I interviewed him kind of off the cuff in my office, and, and we found pieces of that that I think really speaks to this conversation that we're having. So let's take a look at, uh, you know, Michael actually used to work at, hey, uh, I'm sorry, used to work at Newsweek originally. Right. Okay, and he talks about that here. Newsweek, I found, was too mainstream, and I couldn't actually write what I really wanted to say. Uh -huh. uh, and I kind of got sick of it. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm quitting this great job I have where I'm getting all these benefits and going out on my own. And, uh, and then and started doing my own thing. was kind of in the wilderness and then, and then uh, you know, started writing to Rolling Stone. 
So he was worried that they were suppressing what really needed to go out. But it, this next uh, piece is actually really interesting because I've always thought it's the editors. It's the editors who put the pressure on. Because we once had Sam Donaldson on The Young Turks and he said, um, Rune Arledge, back in the day, whenever he asked a tough question of Ronald Reagan and, and the Reagan administration would complain to ABC News, Rune would give him a raise every single time. Okay. Now, we don't have those kind of editors no. anymore. right? No. We have the exact opposite, and that's what Michael talks about here. So you would write something, and what your editor would say what? It's not even what the editor says. It's just these sort of legacy media companies have, have particular voices. And what I, what I saw again and again was that the most interesting things that I was filing would end up on the cutting room floor, right? And and sometimes it'd be details, say, about a death squad, sometimes it'd be details about something else, but the stuff that I was most interested in never actually made it into the magazine. Um, and so I, I think, why is that? You know, and I think there, there, there's those sort of typical, uh, you know, you're writing for the sort of middle, middle American audience, so they don't want to take too many risks one or the other. I think that's part of it. Uh, but I also think that there's only there's a certain level of uh, truth that you can kind of convey through the sort of the, the, that kind of uh, magazine, and you have to go elsewhere if you really want to get close to the bone. At least for, for my opinion. It's really interesting. One more here, and he talks about how that pressure manifests itself in in Iraq. So let's talk about let's watch that. For the Iraq war, I mean, you, you would sit around the editorial room and you could see people whose entire careers you think would have been opposed to something like that, like flipping like light switches, stepping in line to kind of support these policies. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, no, ex ex exactly as you're saying. Uh, I mean, it's so difficult to kind of try to get the real news kind of into the paper, into the magazine. Uh, I mean, the New York Times it has a couple of people who, who do it and do, and do a great job. The Washington Post have a couple of people who do, do, do a great job at it. But, uh, but yeah, the editors make, make it difficult. They make it really difficult. And you know, when you make life difficult on the editors who then make life difficult on the reporters, and then you add this new element in, by the way, we're also watching you and right. we're also tapping your phones, etc. You don't just destroy the Fourth Amendment, which is that you're not supposed to do warrant, you know, you're not supposed to do search and seizures without warrants, it's supposed to be specific, etc. The surveillance state that Michael Hastings would often report on. But you're also destroying the First Amendment. Right.